Well, hello, Edie. Hi, Corey. How are you doing, sweetie? Oh, you look so lovely. You're so cheerful every time you come in here. <laughs> oh, thank you. I'm just me. I haven't scared you yet? You... No, not yet. No, I, I, I can still come in here and, and do and... the reviews with you. I haven't had a restraining order or anything put up against you. Oh, well, give it time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyway, oh, well, I'm glad you're here because uh, I needed someone to talk about this movie, Smart People. Uh, I know why you brought me in because... You wouldn't understand it at all. No. You're not a smart person. No, I'm not one of those people at all. <laughs> and the next door neighbor's dog was gone. So, so you were the next person that was available. So. I know. Well, at least I'm smarter than a dog. Well, no, not necessarily because I don't sit when you tell me to. So I know. That's the only thing. When I tell you, like, get on the bed, roll over, you don't listen to me. <laughs> <Never>. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I don't know. Anyway, so. So uh, I didn't get a chance to see this movie, but I really wanted to. So why don't you tell me about it? Well, yeah, I, I guess I needed someone to talk about this movie with because I went to go see it. Mm-hmm. And let me, how can I put this movie? Well, let me tell you about the movie first. Okay. And it's what you call one of those intellectual comedies. It's, it's a. Ah, uh, no wonder you needed me. You would understand those. <laughs> exactly. It's like one of those subtitle movies. <laughs> I'm looking at this movie like, where the naked people at? <laughs> Ain't no cars blown up yet. This is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's uh, and it's also what you would call one of those comedies slash dramas, and what they call these days a a, a dramedy. Dramedy, yes. Or uh, you could even call it a crama. Crama. <laughs> I like dramedy better. I like crama better because I came up with that. Oh, well, then we'll go with that. Well, you ain't never heard crama. that before. Yeah, it's a crama. It's a crama. Then Miramax's latest crama. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit about this movie. Okay. Now it is one of those movies that centers on a dysfunctional family. And at the head of it, you have Dennis Quaid, who plays a brilliant professor. As a matter of fact, he has a he has a name of, of a professor. He's Doctor Lawrence w- uh, Weatherford. Weatherford, <laughs> exactly. Yes. He should be walking around with a pipe, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but he's <laughs> and smoking no- jacket and everything. But even though he's a brilliant, very intelligent man, he's so intelligent that it's made him socially retarded. You know, people like he that. He has no social skills whatsoever. Exactly. Yes. The people who who are so smart, they're stupid. Yeah. I, I- I know one guy like that. Hmm, what's his name? Hmm, uh, we already established it ain't me. <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm not so smart. I'm stupid. I'm just stupid. <laughs> you got to take the smart out of it. Smart Alec? No. Yeah, just, maybe that. <laughs> and so, and being that he's so intelligent, mm-hmm. it, it has made him a cold person. Not to mention that he's a widower. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff going on in his okay. life that has made him very... Uh, distant from his family. He has a son in college and his son doesn't want to have anything to do with him except for maybe the money. Uh-huh. You know, because you need, money. You yes. need you... books are, excuse, books are expensive. <laughs> but <laughs> so, money can buy you basically anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can eat a lot of shit <laughs> as long as you get paid <laughs> enough for it. So that's what this kid is doing with his dad. Yeah. And then his daughter who is about to graduate from high school, she's graduating at the top of her class. She's, she's, uh, and, but, She's also following in her father's footsteps. So she's like a little clone of him well, in training. Yeah, she's a she's she's a little young Republican. She's she's she, she looks down on other people just like her dad does, and she, she's also has some resentment towards. She also has some resentment towards her dad because although she looks up to him, well, as I said, she's not getting that fatherly figure from him right. that she needs. So and enter. her mother's not in the picture either. So that no, and there's a lot of yeah, yeah there's a lot of weirdness going on. With, things, now, who plays the daughter, real quick? Uh, that's Ellen Page and the son. Uh, nobody. That's that's the actor <laughs> nobody puts on the poster. <laughs> you have all the actors on the poster, but the guy who plays her son is no someone nobody knows. So nobody mentions that guy. But you have you have Ellen Page who plays Juno. the daughter who Juno. played. And she was in Juno. It, she's sort of Juno here too. <laughs> she's so cute. So but so enter Thomas Hayden Church. I and love him. I know Thomas. <laughs> if for those of you who don't know, Thomas Hayden Church was. You might remember him as the Sandman from Spider Man. You also might remember him. He was him, in Sideways. Uh, yeah, yeah he which was, is where I uh, and Wings. He was on Wings. Yeah, he was the buddy in Sideways yeah. on, he's on, that, on that TV show Wings. He, great actor. And now in this movie, he comes in and he plays the adopted brother. <laughs> oh, in, yeah. in the middle of all these smart people, he's the one I relate to. He's the dumbass. <laughs> He comes in. There, he, got, there has to be someone for you to relate to. Of course. The guy's a professional freeloader. I mean, he, okay, get this. Usually when somebody comes in and, and asks you for money, uh-huh. they usually say, hey, man, let me, uh, give, let me get uh, like $5 for, for a yeah. hamburger. Let, let me get some money for some gas. No, he comes in and, and asks his brother, Dennis Quaid. He says, 
hey man, I need some money for an apartment. <laughs> uh, n- next week, I'm gonna need some money for a car. <laughs> Yeah. So, so this he guy doesn't, he doesn't start at the bottom. He goes straight to the top. No, he just know? gets straight straight to the point. <laughs> Next week we're going to Vegas too. By the <laughs> so, way. needless to say, this guy is very aloof. But we like him because he's the free spirit of the bunch, ah. and they need him because even though he's a loser and a dumbass, he's the guy that brings the humanity to everyone. Yeah. See, and that's what happens when you're adopted. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we usually try to adopt kids who are smart. They they pick the most, the biggest dumbass, the biggest loser out of all those kids. They're like we want a refund on this yeah, one. Yeah, they pick the kid that was over there digging in his ass, picking his nose. <laughs> oh, he looks sad. We'll take him. Yeah, no, it's like the sad puppy in the corner. It's yeah. like let's bring him home. <laughs> yeah, they felt so bad for him, and now look what they got. No, and he grew up to be a Rottweiler. No. Yeah, he should have put that guy to sleep like a puppy when he, like a sick dog when he was young. But so now. Also, the character that we can also probably relate to is Sarah Jessica Parker. I love her, too. Oh, I think she's great, man. Mm-hmm. And so in this movie, she plays Dennis Quaid's uh, doctor. He, at the beginning of the movie, he, through circumstances I won't get into, he has a concussion. She's his doctor for a little while. Uh-huh. But it also turns out, in some weird twist of fate, dun, 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 she, she was his student a long time ago. Oh, really? So and, he teaches like medicine or something? No, he teaches uh, Victorian literature. <laughs> yeah, yeah, doctors no. need that. <laughs> they explain why. Yeah, that's what I was wondering at first. I was like, what the fuck was she doing in this class? <laughs> no, she had a crush on him or something. Yeah, she was yeah, she was auditing the class. She wasn't even that wasn't even our major. She just wanted to have sex with this guy. She was just sitting in there stalking his ass. But so she was auditing his penis. So anyway <laughs> So now she because and because he's so cold with people, he can't remember any of his students, including her. But really? turns out that Hey, she still has a thing for him, which Aww. I don't know why, because in this movie, Dennis Quaid looks like shit. He looks like a little homeless guy, doesn't he? He looks like <laughs> he looks like a man that changed into the wolf man and just went on a drinking binge. <laughs> like he didn't go after attacking people. He went straight to the bar. And he went to the bar and went, never left. Went straight to the buffet and just let himself go and never changed back from the wolf man. <laughs> he turned into like a nasty looking wolf man. So so he, now she comes in and of course she's the other one that she, while we have Thomas Hayden Church over there just kind of in a goofy way saying, hey, you guys loosen up. Yeah. Sarah Jessica Park is pretty much saying, you know what? You're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's bad when a woman tells you that. Yeah, you're an asshole. Your kids are assholes. And yeah. you guys really need to open up to but the I world. But I still have a thing for you, and I still want to get you in bed. <laughs> exactly, but I still want that dingling. <laughs> so, <laughs> what? And you'd wonder why the, these people are... They're, they're dysfunctional. They're socially retarded. They're arguing all the time. He looks like a, he, he looks like, as you say, some nasty homeless man. What is it that she wants with these people? Sometimes the heart just gets you, and you know what? No, I know what it is. What we like projects. Women like to fix people. I guess so. We do. We want to take a little stray puppy and make it into a big. But this is like trying dog. to. This is like trying to take a homeless man and clean his ass up. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you can sleep with him. That ain't. Hey, they did it in Down and Out in Be- Beverly Hills. This ain't that movie. <laughs> now, all that said, uh-huh. me describing this movie to you, you can see that this is very typical. Yeah, I mean, we've seen it before. Yeah, and I don't know. I'm not expecting anything truly amazingly original, but this we've seen several times in the past. Uh, most recently, I guess people are comparing this. Uh, people like are comparing this. Sideways, right? Yeah, people are comparing this to Sideways and to Juno. And even though those movies haven't been out, I mean they've been out for a while. Yeah. Actually, uh, Juno came out not too long before this. Sideways came out a few months. I mean, actually a few years. years. A few, yeah, it's, it's been a while. Stupid. No, uh, <laughs> Sideways came out a few years before this. It's this still seems like a template of those kind of dysfunctional family movies. Well, see, but the thing is, is those templates did work. I mean, look at what happened to them. I mean, you know, they were movies that people thought weren't going to go anywhere and they turned out to be blockbusters. But here's the, here's what, what the, I think with this movie, the reason why it just doesn't seem to separate itself too much from that whole dysfunctional family. What? Let me change that. Cause I'm thinking right now <clears throat> with this kind of movie, this kind of intellectual mm-hmm. dysfunctional comedy, We've seen this done with the family several times. Sideways was more like a road trip done with right. two dysfunctional buddies. Juno was done with pregnancy. That yeah. had an angle right there. This movie, 
It's the dysfunctional family. We've seen that done in television. We see it done in comics. We see it done in movies several times. And so Didn't therefore, Sarah Jessica Parker do a dysfunctional family movie just not too long ago. The one a Christmas. What was that called? The uh, Family Stone. Yeah, Family Stone. So yeah. this movie, while it's not bad, and, and it it's definitely has its place, I think its pacing <laughs> is what made it uh, seem maybe below par. Are you sure you just didn't understand it, Corey? No, that's know, not it. You have to be kind of intellectually smart to understand the smart movies. That's not it about at smart all. Smart people. I'm giving you an intellectual <laughs> explanation right here. As much as can't you see steam coming out my ears? I'm trying so hard. Right now. You're but, running on overdrive no, right now. No, there's there, there's sort of a meandering pace through this movie. We follow certain characters and certain subplots that we really don't care about. Dennis Quaid, for example, is trying to become the head of the literature department in his college. That's something that we could really do without. Mm -hmm. And it's also this whole thing of uh, uh, Dennis Quaid and his son. Mm -hmm. His son is, writes poetry and he wants to f appeal to his dad. This movie could have been made <laughs> without that guy. <laughs> In fact, if you look at this poster, it has all the actors from the movie who are main characters except for Dennis Quaid's son, son. in the movie. <laughs> that, that poor guy doesn't get any attention. And really, he's not needed in the movie. So he, this movie's weighed down by a lot of meaningless things, uh -huh. which kind of brings down the entertainment of the film. It, so even, it, you could take out about a half an hour of the film and it'd still, still be good. No, I think you just take out some subplots and fill them in with something more meaningful and we'd have a more enjoyable movie. Um, uh, um, that's what I think. In my opinion. Yeah. See, I didn't see the movie, so I can't, I can't debate you on that because I probably would have actually really liked this movie because I like the, I like yeah, the dry like... sense of humor comedy. No, I'm really into like the... <sighs> How can I put this? Like the British comedies, the dry wit, you well, know, that. Well, then you the, probably would like this I, because. See, this is probably something like Sideways. I loved Sideways. I thought it was one of the best movie, not best movies. Sorry, let me repeat that. It was one of, a very, very well-written movie. Same thing with Juno. Those are two movies that I really enjoyed, and they both have that little dry sense of humor that I enjoy so much. Well, I mean, you, you would probably like this movie then because mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's <clears throat> A lot of it is that sort of dry humor. The, mm -hmm. These people, they... It's not goofy. They they give you these quick little quips at the right time. <laughs> so yeah, but see, yeah. See me. I like the dry sense of humor. You like the fart jokes. You know, there's two totally different people. I don't like people. fart jokes. You know that. You quit. <laughs> Come on, now. I might be dumb, but be fair with me, all right? <laughs> Damn you! And you like everything, hell? They, no, no. Actually, I don't like everything. If they put a rock up on the screen and put nice music over it, you like that. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell Depends me. Depends on what kind of music they're playing. <laughs> exactly. If they put romantic music over a rock on the screen, you <laughs> you love that. No. Speaking of fart jokes, I mean, you're laughing at, talking about me liking farts. If somebody farted in a romantic tune, you'd love it. No, that, I still wouldn't like that because I don't like the fart jokes. So they're <laughs> so, ah, wrong, Corey. So, no, I'm just joking. Anyway, as I said, this movie, I, enjoyable, but someone like me, I don't think it's anything that I would need to rush out. I recommend any, anyone rush out to see on the, let me say it again. I don't think it's anything that I would recommend for myself or anyone else to see mm -hmm. on the big screen. And I would be very content to watch this as a movie at home. Therefore a rental, a very good, well-recommended rental. Very high rental. Yeah. Very high rental. See, and, I, and I'll take your, uh, I mean, I, I believe you on this one, you know. Even from a stupid person like me? You, yeah, I'm going to have to debate that a little bit because, you know what, again, we're going to the fact that Corey's not that smart. Okay. So we have to take that at, you know. All right, Edie. It was funny the first time. <laughs> Joke's over. Stop it. <laughs> when they make a movie called Stupid People, are you going to rush out and see it? <laughs> Bend down. Roll over. <laughs> no. Come on, boy. <laughs> Come on, girl. <laughs> oh, Corey.